Hello, eagles and equestrians. My name is TB Skyne, and welcome back to the Boss Designs of Bloodborne. If you remember last time, it took us uh, it took us a few seconds, just a couple of tries, but I managed to beat Ludwig the Accursed slash the Holy Blade probably somewhat sooner uh, than in terms of game balance, at least you're really supposed to. But that's because I'm just that good at the game. I didn't even die that many times, really. I think like, like yeah, it probably seemed like a lot of the time, but really in, in the broader perspective. Truly, I only died like a few times, relatively speaking, somehow. But that, uh, that does mean <laughs> either now the options are to continue exploring the DLC and get my ass handed to me by the enemies there who are way stronger than I'm ready to handle, or maybe to go and explore a little bit more of the main game, uh, which is probably better paced for what I'm capable of at the moment. And I've decided to explore the main game instead. Specifically, I want to head to the Forbidden Grave and go see what was up with that, uh, that a fly-looking guy and his whole deal. Like, what's the deal with that? I'm gonna find out. Forbidden woods, huh? Well, that won't stop me. Forbidden to other people. Not forbidden to someone who has beaten- Ah! It kind of looks like I'm gonna get frenzied. Ow! Just call it bleed. No? Just a gargoyle statue-looking thing? Lots of statues here. And they don't look very happy. Well. Oh! I found Birgenwerth. Well, the fly person guarding the entrance uh, gives me a slight suspicion that all is not well in Birgenwerth. Oh, why do you have spider legs coming out of your back? That is not where spider legs are supposed to come out of. In fact, spider legs are not supposed to be attached to you at all. Hello, Mr. Fly Person. If you would kindly not. So, this looks like a shortcut to me. Yeah, open it from the other side. Big moon in the sky out there. Anyway, spider leg back persons, fly man. No! Yeah, I'm not resisting that frenzy very well, am I? Wait, is that the shortcut already? Oh, one of those things! I remember, they shoot, like, big fireballs. Yeah. Well, got spoiled on you guys in the Chalice Dungeons. Oh, you have a big mouth on you. Don't use it on me, though. I do not consent. Eel. You have quite a lot of defense on you as well. There we go. Jeez. That's a thing. It's like, uh... So there's an insect theme going on here. Insects and arthropods. Anyway, that's a very quick shortcut. Okay. I'll take it. That feels like it opens somehow. But maybe not from down here. Anyway, I'll just take whatever's in here, please. Pearl Slug. Looks like a chalice dungeon thing. Oh, a hunter. Yep, definitely a hunter. And, okay, so... Do you happen to know someone named Yosefka by any chance? I take it you're up on the second floor. Oh yeah, there you are. Sub. How you doing? 
Down we go. Oh, I can't wait. Hee hee. Blue elixir. Oh my. There was a fight here. See, if there's mimics in this game, that would definitely 110% be one. Ah, oh, student uniform. Hey. Yes, hello, I am student. The spider hides all manner of rituals, certain to reveal nothing, for true enlightenment need not be shared. The spider. Oh, the spider, like that, that, like that, uh, little I met in the, in the, in the vision place with the lecture halls. Damien of Mensis. <laughs> Damien of Mensis. Uh, can he only be summoned once a month? Oh, hello. When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. And when the great ones descend, a womb will be blessed with child. Uh, willingly? Willingly blessed with child? What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night. Oh, Lunarium. Wait a minute. I've seen that tooltip on the loading screens. In his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. In the end, it is said, he left his secret with the lake. Master Willem. Well, he was at Birgenwerth. That's where we heard of him first. Oh, I see you. You are spotted, my friend. Oh, do your worst, fiend. For I am armed with the most powerful gun in the universe. Bang! And also, a big freaking scythe. Well, they don't seem to respect the student uniform. <laughs> Time for Kin of the Cosmos? Empty phantom shell. Empty invertebrate shell that is said to be a familiar of a great one. The healing church has discovered a great variety of invertebrates, or phantasms as they are called. Shells with slime still harbor arcane power and can be rubbed on weapons to imbue them with their strength. Hmm. So that's the same thing as this kind of thing. I guess I really should at some point put some points into arcane, like just enough that I can at least try these. Because at the moment, what that looks like, it's a weapon buff, like along the lines of fire and lightning. Guess that's all that was here? Well, and the Lunarium key, which is probably a big deal. Hello? Yes, I'm here for class. Question. In his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout in the rocking chair. In his final years. You look vaguely alive, though. Uh. Did I just gain insight? Yes, I did. did say he left his secrets with the lake. Hello. 
Please don't kill me. Okay. I don't think whatever that is is going to be fooled by uniform, so... Uh, let me just... Let me just suit up for whatever it's worth. Hi. Well, I'm not seeing... Uh, time for bonfires. Oh, there is some death happening here. Yeah, someone fought something. Oh, I can target it. Okay. Right then. Uh, hi. Am I in here to kill you? I, I guess I am? Why, though? Well, I mean, except the scary big monster, clearly something Master Willem wanted me to go here and do something. That much is obvious. But you're not, like, hostile. Well, if you're a boss, let's get a look at you first. Uh, curly tails. That's that's almost kind of cute. A little bit. And you've got these tendrils all over your body. Looking like a slug. Or with that mouth. Oh, God, what a mouth. A bit more like a leech, actually. A leech or a parasite. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, okay. They... She has children, I see. Okay, then. Does she have long-range attacks? No. But she has a phalanx protecting her. Can I entice you to maybe... Ah, God, those curly legs, though. Right, so... Okay, less range than I hoped, but, uh... Okay, they don't have any health. Madman's knowledge, thank you. Come on. Come at me. It bothers me a little bit that they're not hostile. Oh, you took a lot less damage all of a sudden. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm not being fought back against a lot here. But maybe that'll change when we get up close and personal with, uh... Oh, well! Grant me eyes indeed! Okay, so I only get a few attacks and then I have to... okay. And now she's mad. She's doing something. Oh, I... Oh, okay! Just straight up meteor strike. Fair enough. She gave me a chance to walk away, I guess. Whoa! Okay, now it's interesting. Now we're having fun. Bye.
Okay, so that leaves the other spiders still in the field, though. Okay, well... Are they approaching me? Not so much. Okay, but I need to keep an eye on her. Should probably take care of them, though. Well, now we're playing. Okay, this is a different kind of boss. Oh, okay. So she has an area get the f away from me attack. Cool. Sweet. And yeah, her face is not vulnerable at all. That's why. It's the bodies that are vulnerable, but the face are faces are not. Okay. Well, I can work with that. Hello. I'll just take the hit. <laughs> Probably shouldn't, though. Okay, let's just clear out the honor guard so I can maneuver around her freely. I'm the aggressor here, though. Like, very much so. Eh. Didn't start running fast enough. Clearing out the honor guard. Come on! Okay, lesson learned. Don't use the, uh, don't use the transformed weapon. So, I wonder what happens if you kill him. Not gonna find out, though. So, presumably, she's gonna be hostile right from the get-go now. Oh, yeah, 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 she knows the score. Is she also gonna do the ice attacks right off the bat, or can I clear out the first little horde of them? Unmolested. Okay, sweet. They still seem like mostly they don't want to fight. Well, that's most of her health. I wonder... Okay, she can splash around. Move, get out of my way! There we go. A little more aggression. Does the job. Kin cold blood. So, now what? Oh! There's a person over there. Kin cold blood, huh? Used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. Cold blood of inhuman kin of the cosmos, brethren of the great ones. Used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. Dare not to delve into the world beyond humanity. The eldritch truth touched upon long ago at Birkenwirth. Oh, pretty lady! Hello, Miss Lady! Oh, that's blood. Oh, that's a bunch of blood. That. Oh, sh that's coming from her womb. Oh. Oh. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. The blood was coming from her womb as though it had been torn out. Or, even worse, something had burst out from the inside. Ritual secret broken. Seek the nightmare newborn. How the hell am I back here now? And that door is open. Seek. Okay, excuse me. Please don't try and grab me. Oh, he does try. Cool. We're back at your Yahargul. Okay. What was that? What? They don't usually vanish. What the hell is going on here? What the hell? Oh, there's, uh... There's a couple of those guys sitting around. I guess now my question is, if I had no insight, would I still see those guys? sit there, just reaching out and catching. Nice hat. Um, just reaching out and grabbing prey that comes by like spiders at the center of a web. Yeah, see? How did you respawn all of a sudden? Pretty sure I killed everyone on the way back down here. Let me just have a look. Yeah, hi. Almost as though. And you're not giving me any blood echoes anymore either. Almost as though your existence isn't quite contingent on physical factors anymore. <laughs> Indeed. Well now. Hey, German, are you fing around yet? I have questions! Oh, even the dream is different. The music is different. The skies are different. If all of that is different, then maybe... No, okay. Okay, so killing Rom definitely did something more than just... get rid of a... monster, huh? Gearman, I swear to God, can't just show up sometimes and then vanish for the whole game. Well, maybe the doll has something to say. Welcome, what is it? Good hunter, your presence somehow soothes. I sense the ancient echoes. They course your veins. Ancient echoes, huh? Very well, let me... I'll take a little extra damage. Your presence somehow soothes. Huh? Okay. I have a sneaking suspicion about something. Let me go and check. Oh! Gilbert? Gilbert? 
Was that... Was that him? Oh no. A claw mark is an impulse to seek the warmth of blood. Like a beast. It strengthens visceral attacks, one of the darker hunted techniques. Although the difference is subtle, Runesmith Carroll describes the beast as a horrific and unwelcome instinct deep within the hearts of men, while claw mark is an alluring invitation to accept this very nature. Yeah, it's... It's not just in your hargul, huh? Things are looking different all over. Okay. Let me just have a look around real quick. Hmm, the guy that used to be down here is gone. Ah. Uh, you haven't by any chance seen my little sister, have you? Ah. Uh. I told you to look after the house. But she's run off somewhere. She's still quite small. And wears a big white ribbon. Have you seen her out there anywhere? Oh. Okay then. But if you do see her, would you give me word? She's a small girl. With a big white ribbon. My good little sister. Oh, she hasn't gone to... Okay, um... It's not like completely changed the world, but... It has basically progressed time. This is the same thing that happened after Vicar Amelia, where all of a sudden it got dark. Now, killing Rom seems to have moved the clock forward again. Uh, was it up the ladder or was it through here? Please don't, please don't kill me. Ow. Blood vial. No? Maybe I just missed her. Ah, oh, missed an item. Red messenger red open. First was white, right? Red ribbon that the... Oh, wait. Oh. The thick, pungent red was drawn from the organs of some unfortunate... So... So that ribbon used to be white, huh? Ugh. Well, I guess we should tell her sister. Or should we? Maybe that's not a good idea. I... I'm... <laughs> Maybe we can just tell her sister that, hey, we found her at the at the cathedral. Go to the cathedral. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. She's going to realize we lied, but, you know, for that, we can maybe, I don't know, lock her in a room or something. Right. Last place I want to visit um, before I throw it over to Future Scan. I want to go to the cathedral ward. Uh, the cathedral. Just to, just to see how things are doing there. Because if time has progressed, then there's like a non-zero chance that uh, some stuff has happened there as well. Ariana? Oh, there you are. Forgive me, I'm a bit out of sorts. So, no blood today, I'm afraid. That's fine, actually. I heard that baby cry. Oh. This place, right? Well, she don't offer me much in the way of conversation, but still, I'd rather see her alive anyhow. And I was sort of hope that my asking you turn out that, you know, help him out in the end. I've never been any use to anyone, you see. Just 
happy about it, is all. <laughs> Baby cries. Okay, so I'm just gonna be hearing that around various places, I guess. Hello. She's still f***ed up, um... Ah. How are you doing? We're just, uh, we're just all giggly today, are we? Okay, then. Oh. Back again. Any news of my sister? Uh... Um... No! Go to the cathedral! No. See, because the thing is, if I don't give it to her, what if she goes out looking for her? But if I do give it to her, what if the knowledge drives her... No, no, like... I mean, if nothing else, she's better off not knowing the circumstances by which her sister died, like... Killed by a pig, apparently, which, like, Jesus. I should probably also talk to Master Willem. Come to think of it. Eileen, are you around? No? You sure are, though. Uh, okay. I guess they jumped down there. No? You're just saying basically the same stuff. So, that was Rom, the vacuous spider, whose death seems to have triggered a mild change in the environment. Just a, there's, there's a few things have changed, and now there's a lady with the womb torn out of her, covered in blood, and I'm hearing random baby crying around the place, which is creeping me out ever so slightly. And I got a text pop-up telling me to find a cursed nightmare child or something. So that's good. I don't know what that means, but that's fortunately not my problem. I just gonna dump this entirely on you, Future Skyne, because, uh, good luck! Well... Thank you very much, Pat Skyne. And, uh, yeah, another trypophobia warning for this episode is probably appropriate because, boy howdy, Rom the Vacuous Spider sure is full of holes. Before we talk about her character design, though, let's talk about that name, Vacuous. Now, Vacuous can mean one of two things. In its archaic meaning, that is, a meaning that is largely discontinued in common use, it means to be empty, to be devoid of content. But in a modern sense, it's much more commonly used to describe someone as being empty-headed, thoughtless, or indeed stupid. Which makes it an odd name for a boss, certainly an unintimidating one and makes her an odd contrast to the area that leads up to her, Birgenwerth, the foremost place of scholarship and learning in the world of Bloodborne. And it makes it interesting that it's Master Willem, of all people, who points us towards her, seemingly asking us to kill her? Or, at the very least, to find her. And merely by having Master Willem point us towards her, we gain insight, as though her mere existence is some kind of eldritch arcane secret, the knowledge of which will literally expand your mind. Which again makes it interesting that she herself is apparently vacuous, empty of knowledge, empty of understanding, empty of insight? Well, put a pin in that, we'll come back to it. Let's look at the character design. And besides the warning for trypophobia that I repeated at the start of the segment, I should probably also add a little bit of a warning for people who are creeped out by creepy crawlies, like spiders, parasites, or leeches. Because the other part of Rom's name is that she's the vacuous spider, except when you look at her, well, I wouldn't say that spider was my first thought. 
For one thing, spiders, and indeed all arachnids, are characterized by having segmented bodies, specifically the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now, on ROMs attending spider bodyguards slash children, you can see this segmentation in play. The head of the spider acts as the cephalothorax, and the back of the body is the abdomen. ROMs body shape, however, does not appear to be segmented so much as it appears continuous. She looks essentially more like a slug or a worm than she does as a spider. In fact, more than anything, her body shape reminds me of a leech. And so does her mouth. See, that circular, kind of jagged orifice with all the weird mismatched teeth, that's the kind of orifice that you get on leeches, or lampreys, or indeed parasitic worms. It's an orifice that isn't really designed to chew food or catch prey. It's merely designed to hook into a victim and hold on while the parasite proceeds with the draining. Anyway, I'm gonna put these pictures away now because they creep me the hell out, frankly. But the thing I want to bring up here is that, first of all, Rom does not look like a spider. She doesn't even really, in terms of body shape, look much like her own children. And the reason why is that compared to them, she is swollen, bloated, like a leech or a tick after a big nice meal. Another interesting difference is the eyes. Rom, you see, has quite a lot of them. Rom has a number of eyes on her skull, but then also eyes dotted all along the sides of her body. Her children have holes along the sides of their bodies as well. Holes where eyes might conceivably go, but they are empty. Almost as though whatever it is that Rom has been gorging herself on, it has filled up those voids inside her, made her perhaps not so vacuous anymore. Which leads us on to the interesting things that happen when Rom dies, because when Rom dies, the world changes. Of course, the first thing that happens is that we meet a crying woman wearing a white veil as though she's a bride of some sort who stands there with blood running from her midriff right where her womb would be. Now between this and the third umbilical cord and the child who begins crying in the distance after all of this is over, I think we'll probably have good cause to speak more in depth about the whole wombs and birthing thing later. For the moment, I want to talk about the moon, because as we begin to hear the cry of that child, we turn around and see that the moon, which when we dove into the lake had been pale and distant and silvery in the night sky, is now in the process of, well, pulling a full Majora's Mask on us. It has grown enormous and overwhelming, and it begins to fill up our entire field of view as it seemingly descends towards us, becoming everything and crushing us. Killing Rom almost seems to have been akin to opening a floodgate or breaking down a dam. Something has gotten loose and is flowing in now to fill all available gaps. And we can see the effects of that all over Yarnum as we step back into the world. Not just in the incessant crying of a newborn infant, which I would very much like to have stopped soon, please, because it's stressing me the hell out, but the moon is now blood red in the sky. The sky itself is alive with different colors, and even the people of Yarnum are clearly affected. The church lady who we rescued, who's sitting in the chapel, has been reduced to nervous giggling. And most of the residents of Yarnum, who once used to answer when we knocked on their doors, even if only to scream at us, have now gone silent. Even the obnoxious bourgeoisie throwing a party in one of the houses near the start of the game have felt the effects of this blood moon at least enough to shut the hell up. But the one who seems most profoundly affected by the change in environment is... Ariana, who has lost her previous confident, easy manner and now sits in her chair clutching at her midriff, which... Huh. Something else that's also started happening is that we are being attacked now by angry Yarnamite villagers who seem to come out of nowhere, but when we defeat them, they fall over and simply disappear. And having defeated them, if we turn our backs for just a few moments, 
Suddenly they reappear and give us no blood echoes when we kill them another time. Almost as though they're not really all there. Almost as though we've started seeing things. Except, of course, it's inaccurate to say that we've started seeing things because we have been seeing things for quite a while now. Once we crossed some threshold of insight, we began to see the amygdala, of course, and they in turn became conduits that ushered us on to what seems to be alternate worlds, almost worlds as ethereal and unreal as the hunter's dream, the nightmare frontier, the lecture hall at Birgenwerth, and the old hunter's nightmare. And all of this intensified, apparently, when we killed Rom, the vacuous spider, which brings me back to the question, what was Rom doing at the bottom of that lake? What was she consuming that made her swell up the way that she did? And who was she consuming it from? Which is a question that it is hard to definitively answer, but my take, at least, is that she was down there feasting on insight, humanity's insight. Hence, also, I think, the name Vacuous, because she is a black void of insight and knowledge. She consumes it not to internalize it or learn anything from it or have any kind of personal growth from it, but to feed on it, to metabolize it as food and turn it, I think, into her children. One of which even drops a madman's knowledge when we kill it. Literal metabolized insight. In killing her, her dampening effect on our perception of reality is removed, and we can begin to see things in Yarnum much more for what they are. You might call it an uh, eye-opening experience. And this would explain why Master Willem directs us towards her, perhaps hoping that we'll destroy her, because he is, after all, the master of Birgenwerth College, the foremost center of learning and knowledge and the pursuit of truth in Yarnum. It would also help explain why Rom is not hostile, and in fact even reticent to attack us. After all, why would she want to destroy her host? Why would she want to torch her own meal ticket. Hey, thank you for watching another episode of The Boss Designs of Bloodborne. As ever, if you like these episodes, then the like, comment, and subscribe buttons down below are your friend, and also my friend, because they're the buttons that tell the YouTube algorithm whether or not it should consider a video good and therefore show it to others. So if you like the video and you think other people should maybe also see it, well, consider hitting the buttons down below, because it actually does help me out quite a bit. If you'd like to support the channel more directly than that, then I have a Patreon, a merchandise store, and a tip jar. There's plenty of monetization options available. And if you want to, you can use them, and I would appreciate the help a great deal. But if you're not in a position to be able to, or hell, if you just don't want to, don't worry about it. It's completely okay. At the end of my videos, though, I do try to encourage my viewers to, generally speaking, support the content that they enjoy directly with anything they can, whenever they can, because a one or two dollar donation for a video, especially if it's a niche content creator or someone who doesn't have a big audience, is quite literally the same as thousands of views on a video. It makes so much more of a difference than you think. So whether it's me or someone else, if there's content that you enjoy, please consider supporting it directly whenever you can with whatever you can. Speaking of which, I need to welcome Justin Hatch, Noah Edwards, Jakub Saliek, Raphael Landrove, Drax Lean, Nick Coffin, Zacharia Seitz, Freya Mir, Derek Taylorfer, and Sesti Ben to my Patreon this month. Thank you very much for helping me pay my rent. Anyway, last bit of self-promotion, I have a second channel. If you would like to watch the unedited footage that goes into the episodes of Boss Designs of Bloodborne, that's available over there, complete with all of the embarrassing mistakes that I edit out to make myself look good. 
I'm also playing Hades over there, which seems to be quite popular, as well as Breath of the Wild. I've got some old playthroughs of Final Fantasy games, complete with commentary and analysis. And with a little bit of luck, I'll be putting up some more episodes of my Diablo playthrough of the original 1996 game. So if any of that is interesting, like, comment, and subscribe over on that channel as well, etc, etc, YouTube Reasons algorithms. Anyway... Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to wear a mask and wash your hands. And when the vaccine comes, for the love of God, take it and get your parents to do it too so we can be out of this damn thing. And try to act in solidarity with those who are trying to make the world a better place.